Disclaimer. This video is a non-edited recording. It has mistakes, it is maybe sometimes a bit slow, it is not scripted. I make it up as I go along. The series is a very brief introduction to Houdini concepts. It's not a classic click-along tutorial. I think it is important when learning Houdini to know about the different available tools and concepts. Not in depth, it's eno enough to know about them. I show what I like and I try to explain why I like something. I also try to mention things that confused me when I started learning Houdini. The topic of this course is uh, the, pro uh, the various programming languages available in, in Houdini. There is 8Script, there is VEX, there is VOPS, which is the graphical representation of VEX, it's VEX operators. And there is VEX Wrangles, there is Python, there is OpenCL, there is C++. And I would say that um, Houdini in its entireness is uh, somehow com comparable to an IDE. An IDE is an integrated development environment. Um, there's m Maybe you can Google this, there's many around. Uh, I don't want to, um, you know advertise other software companies right now so um, let's let's start with the first one and the first one is hscript when you read the manual it says that uh, hscript is Houdini's legacy scripting language and that's sort of wrong <laughs> and right at the same time um, it used to be used for really longer scripts, and I would say there it's definitely depreciated. So for longer scripts, it's not recommended anymore. For that, use Python and the P Python I API. But it's still very much alive for one-line expressions, and um, I've shown that in earlier videos. It's about uh, channel references, um, so when you do animation, you definitely need HScript. Um, it's um, basically, let's quickly show this. Uh, prepared a little scene here. So when you, you remember, you can go in here and press on scene data and um, get yourself whatever the world transfers. Uh, or, or the translate here. And then you get like eight script, and at at that level here, one liners that go into parameters, it's uh, very much still alive. Um, so you need to learn it. It's sort of the basic thing, but you don't have to learn the whole language. Um, you just have to learn the few bits and bobs that are useful for um, putting them into parameters. Okay, um, that's the first one. The second language is VEX. VEX or vector expressions um, comes in many different forms in um, Houdini. When I started learning Houdini, it really confused me because when you look into the, um, in the, to the documentation, you will find stuff like VEX compilers and a lot of really complicated stuff that you will probably never need. And only after about a few weeks later, um, at the time there wasn't that many great video tutorials around, um, I found Vex Wrangles, and Wrangles are amazing. And then there's um, Vops, which is the graphical representation of Vex, um, which is really cool. Vex is ultra fast. Um, everything that you will write in there, if you use an, a wrangle and it iterates over points, um, it will run multi-threaded. So it will use all the cores of your CPU, whereby, you know, it's not about creating, uh, it, it won't work when you're only manipulating 10 points or something like this. It only kicks in when you manipulate something like 10,000 points and then it will or, uh, go in parallel. Maybe 10,000 is even too less. You won't even notice. 
I'm showing some examples in a second. Um, it's really cool when um, manipulating geometry like points, vertices, brims, volumes, but it's also used in the mantra shading language. So when you do procedural materials, you can use VEX or VOP. It's used in compositing and it's used in animation. It's everywhere. So learning this is um, essential if you want to go on to the next step. So let me show some stuff now. Um, here I've prepared like a little example. Basically it's only a sphere, but it has got a thousand rows and a thousand columns. It's really, really dense. Then I put a mountain top on top on, on top of it that makes it look a little bit nicer. It's just like a little bit wobbly. So and now here I've wrote like a really, really simple um, VEX code. At P is um, at is for attribute, the attribute P, which you can see here in the geometry spreadsheet, shows the position of every point. This wrangle here runs over points, run over points. You could also have it run over vertices, numbers, primitives, and only once. Um, that's something for another topic. So I have this expression here, and all it does, it adds 1 to the um, y component of the position. So all that will happen when I turn on this, it, the, all the points will be shifted up by 1. You can see it here in the geometry spreadsheet. Uh, let's bypass this. So when it's at um, when it's bypassed, when the code has not run, the first point, which is number zero, is at position 0 0.9596529, and just adds one to it, and it doesn't take much long, uh, much time to calculate. If you go into node info, which is a really cool thing, it actually tells you last cook time was 0 0.02 milliseconds. And it needed 100 megabyte of RAM, and it's uh, 999,000 polygons, and uh, yeah, roughly a million points. So the same thing that I did here, you can build as a VOP, as a um, as a graphical expression. So again, the point P goes in here, and number one, uh, um, and one is added, and it's output here again. Let's see if I bypass this, it goes down. So it does exactly the same thing. Let's see how fast it was. Oh, right, it already took a bit longer, but I think the reason for that is actually um, minimal. So. I, I, Whenever you use point wrangles or VOPs, for speed reasons, doesn't matter. Use whatever you want. Now, Python. Let's first look at the slide. Oh, wrong slide. That's the slide. Python scripting. When to use that? All the shelf tools are made with it. It's a workflow thing. It's a um, pipeline thing. When importing and exporting and sorting external data, um, you need Python. Um, it can handle event handles. So if you can write scripts that do something when you open a file or when you click a node. Um, and what it can do or what you can do with Python is, on one hand, you can do basically the same thing as that you can do with VEX. You can manipulate geometry but you can also create and edit the nodes. I'm going to show a simple example in a second. Um, yeah, when manipulating geometry, it's not as fast as um, using a VEX, as doing the same thing in VEX, but sometimes it's easier to write code in Python, and sometimes the speed is not really relevant, <coughs> because even manipulating, like, 
a few million points um, doesn't take that much longer, whereby it's not recommended. Um, PySide, which is like a tool to create menus, and PyQt5 UI creation is also integrated in, um, in Houdini, which is a great thing. I'm not going to go into depth about this, but maybe you know about this, so now you know you can even use that. So let's quickly look at Python. So the same thing that we did here, moving the point up one, Here's the, here's the code for that. Um, so what it does, it iterates over all the points and adds one and sets the point position. So allow how long does it execute? That already takes 5.8 seconds. So it's compared to um, VEX, which it only took milliseconds, so not even the thousands of a seconds. Here it already takes six seconds. Maybe you could implement this faster <laughs> in a different way, <coughs> but now the cool thing about um, Python is, one of the things you can't do, I'm just adding new tool here, uh, call it Python test yeah like this okay go into script turn to Python and I already prepared something here Basically, what it does, it uses the dot .who module of Python and creates a node which is of type geo and not more. So let's apply this, accept this, and now I've got the Python test here. When I press this, I actually have to go up one level. It created, uh, delete this again, press this. And it creates a geo node. It's actually an empty G node, which is quite handy. But you see, it can create nodes. Now I've got loads of nodes. All the shelf tools are actually made like this. You can look at that. Um, you can edit the tool and you see the code. Normally it's not much in there because it reads um, another Python module which is called Object Tool Utils and when you search for that on your hard drive in the Houdini folders you'll find it and you can actually look at the whole code. This is just like uh, the code being read in into the otherwise you would have like a really huge script in here. You'd rather have that separate. But so all those tools that um, side effects is providing they're all implemented in Python, the lot, and all the logic. So let's get rid of all those nodes again. And I think let's have another look. Yeah, I think I said everything about Python, except for one thing, which is maybe like a little anecdote. When I started losing, um, using Houdini and learning it, one of the main reasons was me wanting to get deeper into Python because Python's um, a programming language that is in all the major 3D packages and not only in 3D packages. It's very useful if you know how to write Python code. Um, you can, you know, make your life a lot easier, write like little file manipulating things, whatever. And Python also is a really, really excellent language. Um, it's actually not called um, Python because of that snake. It's called Python because of Monty Python. And if you read the really old um, documents that were made to learn Python from that Dutch professor, uh, he actually uses um, Monty Python's jokes in, <laughs> in the explanation, which is pretty cool. And the language is really, really, really powerful. It's amazingly powerful. 
It's very special as well. And it's made originally to learn programming. So, yeah, the, the concept behind it is, uh, in the beginning, it was a language made to teach programming. And it has grown enormously, and it's everywhere now. I mean, all the major 3D packages included. So when you're into 3D and programming, learn Python. So the next slide. OpenCL. So you have another language in um, Houdini, <coughs> which is OpenCL, and that runs on the GPU, so on your graphics card, but it can also run on CPUs. And let's look into my examples, um, because it's used, for example, in those new height fields, and when you, you know, you can edit those nodes here. Um, this is always a pain on this little monitor because uh, allow editing of contents, turn that on, then you can dive in here. And here you will find a solver. And in the solver, somewhere, where was it? Here. There is an OpenCL node. Here's all the OpenCL code. So, pretty cool. You can write this yourself, and it's also pretty cool that this is open. You, I, you can have a look at how side effects implemented erosion for height fields, and it's all open like in OpenCL, Open Compute Language, by the way, it's called. So if you feel like it and you're really nerdy, go and learn OpenCL. And the next thing you have, let's go back to my slides, is C++. So when you're a real mega nerd, you can really go into the heart of Houdini, completely tailor it to your liking. Um, you can work with the same library that the people that develop Houdini are using. Um, the SDK is um, out of this world. It's too advanced for me. I couldn't care less, um, but it's great that it's there so I can dabble with it, um, maybe have a look. It's not my cup of tea, but Anyway, so the other thing I mentioned in the title slide is IDE, Integrated Development Environment. And when you listen to my talk here, it wasn't much 3D, it was all about programming languages. <coughs> and an IDE is a development environment. So it's um, a place where people that develop software have tools. And all those tools are available to you as a normal user in Houdini. That's a big difference to other programs. In a lot of cases, they are uh, developed in a different IDE. Actually, Houdini is as well, but doesn't matter. Big parts of Houdini are developed in Houdini. Um, like I showed you earlier, the OpenCL mountain, sop, uh, mountain erosion um, implementation is done in I mean, the, the, the developer, the software developer that um, developed that never left Houdini. They worked within it, and they have all the tools, like tools to create menus and all of that. Yeah, that's why I like Houdini. You can go as deep as you want. You can just learn a script, whereby I think that's necessary, because, uh, for example to have something move uh, while an animation is running, you will need those variables like $f and so on. So you will need a script, but you won't need to learn the whole language. Um, it would be nice to have a place that I could send you to that is like the condensed a script that is like sort of needed and not, the, not all the rest that's also in the documentation. Um, Vex is ultra cool because it's ultra fast. If you are into um, pipeline stuff, use Python. Also, if you want to use external libraries 
For example, some I think in the game tools there's an open street map importer. I think that wasn't really hard to implement because there probably was a Python library already there. OpenCL, very advanced. Uh, you can run your stuff on the graphics card and um, as in the erosion example, you can not only manipulate like pixels, you can manipulate um, points and uh, 3D uh, data. Um, and then there is C++, but that's the really, really, really far advanced uh, thing to use. So have fun learning Houdini. I know it's confusing. Let's say script a must to degree, yeah, just those little one-liners that go into the parameters. Um, you can happily only work with WAPs. It doesn't matter. You don't need to use wrangles or the even more complicated compiling of Vexcode and so on. I think you'll never need that. But um, it doesn't matter. Use WAPs or wrangles. You should be able to do something like 99% that you want to do in WAPs that you in wrangles you can do a little bit more and maybe at some point you will realize that um, typing one line let's say cosinus times sinus divided by whatever variable is a lot quicker to write than building a network for each of those mathematical functions i i really prefer writing wrangles before building like a complicated uh, um, formula into into a, a graphical representation of it yeah and python python is amazing it's great you can create um nodes with it this is the the thing that you can't do in vex so if you have the idea of um creating nodes for your um script or for your tool that you want to write use python that's it for today i hope you liked it and thanks for watching bye bye